The economy is booming, they told us. Then we saw some admissions of slowdown. Unbelievably, even Warren the Insider Buffett admitted it. What's interesting is that despite an obvious slowdown present, calls for interest rates to be dropped, and QE to begin, there is no possible way a recession could occur. In fact, nearly 100% of economists suggest no recession anywhere on the horizon. Something's fishy. You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to talk first about what Larry Kudlow said, then we're going to get into what he could be hiding. Let's begin by taking a look at this. The chief economic advisor Larry Kudlow called on the Federal Reserve to quote, immediately cut interest rates by half a percentage point. All of the media was covering it. This happens to be Bloomberg. Market Watch got the same info. And then we also had CNBC. I'm going to give you the actual source of that in just a moment. But the CNBC article mentioned something interesting. Kudlow said this, looking at some of the indicators, I mean, the economy looks fundamentally quite healthy. We just don't want that threat. There's no inflation out there, so I think the Fed's actions were probably overdone. This information is quite contradictory if you ask me. Look around and you will see something very clear. The stock market has performed very well over the last few years throughout this interest rate hike cycle that they've been doing. They did it as slow as humanly possible and of course they have been projecting to the media through their statements that they will make a very easy monetary policy a permanent fixture for the Federal Reserve. So there really is no reason for them to be worried and yet they are. To me, this sets off some very important warning signals that I believe everybody should be paying attention to. We'll cover more about that in a moment. I just wanted to show you the actual source, which is Axios. White House economic advisor Larry Kudlow on Friday told Axios that he wants the Federal Reserve to, quote, immediately cut interest rates by 50 points. I wanted to give you the source itself so that you know where it's coming from. I always do that with any of the information that I bring to you. I'm always always getting it at the source or as close to it as possible. Sometimes I don't even actually reference certain pages or certain documents in the video, but I will include them in the sources so that you have everything. We are documenting the process all the way through. Now, if everything is okay, why in the world would you need to bring interest rates down to this level, which is historically so low? You should be able to withstand higher interest rates, but of course, we know that is just not possible today. So the information is constantly being contradicted even from these individuals at this level. The actual real economy isn't doing well as we have been told. Main Street is not Wall Street and that is very very clear today. More than 41,000 people have lost their jobs in the retail industry so far this year, a 92% spike in layoffs the same time last year. Retail is a big part of the United States. Whether or not that's a good thing is up to you to decide. However, these people are losing a lot of work because of what has happened with retail big box stores, all of these clothing brands, department stores, and so many other places, but that extends into other avenues as well. Manufacturing is not doing as good as it was promised. Massive levels of inventory have been building up I just covered that yesterday, I believe. This is not a good sign for things to come. And right now, we are at the peak of a cycle. This should be very good right now. It should be booming. There should be none of this bad news. And yet, there is non-stop flows of this type of information. Job cuts have been trending upward since the last half of 2018. We continue to see companies respond to shifting consumer behavior, new technology, as well as trade and market uncertainty through workforce reconstruction. Basically, people getting fired. Meanwhile, retailers are closing or revamping brick and mortar locations, leading to job loss or going bankrupt and cutting their entire workforce. I've been covering this extensively over the last while, as you know. That is never, ever a good sign of what we have going on when even the retail locations like this are unable to keep their doors open, even by just shedding some jobs, getting rid of a few locations. The entire corporation closes down. That's big news. 
Even the great Walmart seems to be part of this, to a small degree anyway. They seem to be closing 11 stores in the United States so far this year. Obviously not a big number, but it does contribute to the total. And I would like to see if this continues into the next recession. Are we going to see Walmarts close or will they possibly do better because people are looking for more discounted products. They also sell food at these stores, so maybe people are gonna go get those deals. So we may actually see Walmarts improving as conditions worsen, but only time will tell. So let's see what happens and I will bring that to you. The trade issues are something that never seem to be resolved. We were told it was going to be a 90 day truce. Then after that guaranteed 100% tariffs are going to be going on China, but it didn't seem to go that way. It was indefinitely postponed. Now, Stephen Roach, Yale University senior fellow, he had a few things to say. I just wanted to cover it very quickly. Apparently, he doesn't see a resolution having any kind of meaningful impact on trade between the two countries. While China would likely agree to a multi-year purchase of agriculture, soybeans, and energy, which was already known previously. We've known this for months. They agreed to that. That's pretty much certain as long as other things go ahead. He said that he doesn't believe it will be enough to satisfy investors. They're looking for more. At the bottom paragraph, the bulk of the progress will be on the bilateral trade front, which quite frankly, as an economist, I find the least appealing because that's really a reflection of our own macroeconomic imbalances. This last one is very interesting. If we can squeeze the Chinese piece, that'll just send those goods to another higher cost producer. So this is sort of a cosmetic deal at best, but it's a good deal and it's better than nothing. And that's really what the market I believe is hoping for, that there's at least going to be some level of positivity. They don't even really care if it's in depth, but in the longer term, they may start waking up to it. The way I look at it is that as soon as as we get anything in the news, even if it's just a small piece of that, as long as that goes through, then the markets will immediately react positively to it, and then they can delay letting everybody know about all that other stuff, and by then, the markets will forget about it. That usually happens with everything else. We just revise it down later, nobody really even pays attention. I'm bringing you these two charts. They're talking about contagion, specifically with Turkey. Now there's a lot on here and the font is pretty small, but I just wanted to touch on something. So hear me out. On the very left hand side, you are seeing these European banking institutions that have exposure to Turkey, BBVA, Unicredit, BMP, ING, and Intesa. Now, while it's not the biggest thing in the world, it gives us a good lesson and perhaps a foreshadowing of what will happen with all of these institutions and their contagion effect. If this country fails, goes further and further into a recession, which they're already in, we can see the chaos brewing and the impact that has on the institutions and then the countries that those institutions belong to. So I'm going to pay very close attention to this and we will see how it all plays out. The market share, as you can see, is not that big as I said, but I think that it is significant enough to cause some serious waves. And there's another chart here just connected in with that. European banks exposure to Turkey peaked at $223 billion in 2016, declined subsequently to $144 billion in the third quarter of 2018. It looks like Spain is the one who is most heavily exposed to what we can see at this point. France is second, and then Italy, UK, and the US. So a lot of countries here could be facing some turmoil because of what happens in Turkey. A lot of individuals aren't aware of how this works, but the contagion effect is more present today than it has ever been in history. Globalization has allowed these corporations to reach their tentacles into other countries all around the world. So be very careful about all of the risks that may not seem so evident, but you got to dig. You got to know what could be lurking around the next corner. I'm going to end the video there. If you found this informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a like on this video, you are supporting me. You're supporting this channel and you're supporting the truth. So I do appreciate that. If you want the financial education that wasn't taught to you in school, then these two books have everything you need. You'll get up to speed in the 
these two books. They're so simple, diagrams, charts, everything from A to Z. Check them out at the link in the description if you want the audiobook that's available at themoneygps.com. If you want to see the growing list of stores in the United States that are closing down rapidly in 2019, you got to watch this video. Click on it and I will see you there.